Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be doing a full comprehensive review of the Polar H10 chest strap, the heart rate monitor paired with the Elite HRV app. If you don't know what HRV is or heart rate variability, then I will link another video that I did where I go very in depth into the science and how to understand it, how to quantify it, and what to look for. So definitely go check that out. It'll also be linked up in the description as well if you wanna go further with heart rate variability. In short, it's a measurement that can help you determine how well you're recovering or how resilient you might be and gives you a clear picture into autonomic balance, basically the balance between parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Using this data, you can make changes to your life or to your training to help increase your recovery or your resilience. So here's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna break down how the Polar H10 works and how to set it up. Then we're gonna take a look inside the Polar app. After that, we're gonna do a deep dive into the Elite HRV app, and I'm gonna break down and explain to you why I am using the Polar H10 and Elite HRV to track my heart rate variability and, and why you might want to as well. Then we're gonna talk about the difference between this, the Polar H10 and the Elite HRV app in comparison to other wearables like the Apple Watch or the Aura Ring or the Whoop Band and explain to you why you might actually want both but how they're different and in what situations or circumstances are they efficacious. At the end, I'm gonna go over my overall thoughts and conclusion about the device and some of the drawbacks as well as what I liked as well. And if you stay to the end, I got a very special resource for you that's going to help you increase your heart rate variability or if you wanna improve your recovery or your resilience, uh, that can be made possible through these different things that I'm gonna be sharing with you at the end. So be sure to stick with me because I got a lot of goodness coming your way. As always, timestamps will be down in the timeline below. So feel free to jump around the video and go to the part that is most interesting to you. So how the strap works, uh, there are two pieces. You have the actual sensor itself right here, which clamps onto the strap. And the strap is a nice fabric, kind of stretchy material. It has a little bit of a give to it. So this is the piece that wraps around your chest, just underneath your breastbone, right at the solar plex. And on the back, you will see that it has this uh, interesting little, I guess, I wouldn't call it a fabric, but it's more like a textured like almost like leather and this helps conduct the electricity that is being picked up from your body and so when you put this on you actually want to put a little bit of water on here or dampen this so that it can help uh, increase the accuracy of the readings that you are taking so a cool thing about the polar h10 is it is widely recognized as one of the most accurate heart rate monitors on the market for consumers. So for that reason, it's already looking pretty good, but it's also at a nice 80 to $90 price point, depending on what size you buy. And this is the medium to large size. I'm a really small guy. I got a small chest and it actually fits around me perfectly at the smallest uh, circumference. So I'm about five, six, 120 ish, 125 pounds. So very small, very light. Um, and the medium size is good enough for me. So once you wrap it around, and you clip it on, you're going to connect to it via Bluetooth, either through the Polar app or through the uh, Elite HRV app, which we're gonna be going into in a second here. So when you jump into the Polar app, it's going to give you this nice menu where the first thing it does is prompts you to start a session. So underneath, you're gonna see the latest sessions that you have done. So if you click on one of those, it will give you the readouts for all the measurements that we're taking during that session, as well as your target heart rate, uh, target heart, heart rate zone, and in, in addition to that, a map of the uh, course that you took during that workout or wherever you were it has a GPS in it. Also has a little personal best tab that you can see uh, based on you know the workouts that you've done or the sessions that you have. Uh, what was the best session so far? Now, if you look at that bottom tab, you're gonna see upgrades. And in upgrades, they have these different more tabs that you can click on that will help you determine, I would say, more specific measurements. So for example, if you click on this one, the fitness test, uh, this is gonna help you determine what is your baseline, right? So you're gonna wear your heart rate sensor, you're gonna lie down, you're gonna relax, and you're gonna start the test. And this will help you understand uh, what is your normal heart rate, what is your resting heart rate, and therefore you can start using that data to make more informed decisions about your training or about your recovery. If you click on blog, they have more resources for you here about general fitness, about target heart rate training, 
or mindfulness, different health, wellness, and fitness uh, sort of articles that might be good resources for whatever type of training that you might be getting into. And under info, you have the ability to uh, access some of their upgrades or get more involved support, right, which is pretty cool. And then under settings, this is where you build out your profile or you connect to uh, your Apple Health app as well. So if we go back to training and you hit start, training started. It's training going started. To start measuring a couple of different variables. It's going to look at your distance, your calories burn, your speed, your heart rate, your duration, and also what target heart rate zone are you in? And let's just training paused at 15 put that on. Training pause paused real quick. at 15 seconds. Training stopped. So stop. if we go back to uh, this plus button, we're able to pick what type of training session we want to do. Now, unfortunately, they don't have as many options as the Apple Watch, but they have a fair amount here. So let's just say you want to do, uh, you want to go for a mountain bike ride, you start training your mountain started. bike ride. Training then, started. Boom, it's going to give you these readouts. Obviously, because I'm not wearing the chest strap, it's not reading out anything at training this very moment. Training paused at nine seconds. But if we training go back stopped. to an older session, so for example, if we look at this bike biking one, it's just going to say, okay, you went for a 10 minute bike ride just around the block. Here's the target heart rate zone that you were in. Here's the amount of calories that you burn. Here's the max speed that you were at. So if you're really into distance training, uh, whether it's running, cycling, or anything else where you're going to be going far swimming, then this might be a good uh, heart rate monitor to use. And that's why this app is, is kind of cool. So I wanted to explain why I started using the Polar H10 strap and the Elite HRV app to start tracking my heart rate variability and start using different lifestyle interventions to increase that and improve that. So as I've covered in the other heart rate variability video, the Aura Ring is awesome because it will give you a HRV score that is pretty accurate. And that score is something called it's an RMSSD. And all this stuff is explained in that video. So if you don't know what it means, definitely go reference that video. And that is a good index of your overall recovery. However, if you want to become more resilient and you want to create more autonomic balance, if you know, for me, I was having issues with my hormones. And so I wanted to create a better response to stress, a healthier response to stress. So I wanted to create more autonomic balance, more parasympathetic and sympathetic balance. Well, in order to do that, there are certain metrics to look at like the SDNN time domain measurement, as well as the low frequency band measurement within the frequency domain measurement. By using biofeedback and breathwork techniques and exercise and lifestyle interventions, I can slowly but surely bring up my resilience and I'm only able to see that autonomic balance, parasympathetic to sympathetic activity in real time using a device that's gonna measure during the day and measure and also be able to pick up on those other types of measurements, not just the RMSSD. So for me, it was very valuable so I can see, okay, during the day when I'm having real life stressors, so I can see my metrics in real time. You know, I can sit down to do a breathwork practice. I can check my HRV and my heart rate. And after I'm done, I can check and see how I did during that session and if I'm actually making improvement because I don't wanna waste my time. There's only so much time in a day. And I wanna make sure that not only am I seeing the num numbers go up, but also subjectively, am I feeling better? Which is the most important thing, but it's it's fun for me and I've been nerding out on quantifying this and actually being able to gamify it and, and have fun with just learning what these numbers mean and how to increase them and if it does actually make me feel better or worse or no change at all. Now, in addition to that, I will take a uh, resting HRV score in the morning, right? And over time, I will start to develop a baseline and start to see trends of when I can push myself and when I should take it easy. So for example, yesterday, I woke up with a three readiness score after my morning HRV test, which means I get to take it easy. I had a really, really big recovery day yesterday. This morning, I had a nine readiness score. So that means, okay, I can go work out. I can push myself a little bit harder. I'm gonna be a little bit more resilient. I can make a better video. I tried to make this video yesterday, but it, it didn't turn out very well because I, I wasn't all there, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't fully recovered and my, my nervous system was, was skewed really far to the sympathetic. So I needed to focus on something else. I needed to do other things. Had I listened to my body, I probably would have had a better day yesterday. So this is the type of data that you can get through these devices 
And it doesn't mean it has to dictate your entire day. It just means you might make a few different decisions a little bit, you know, with a little bit more awareness, if that makes sense. So if we jump into the Elite HRV app, what you're gonna see is a screen that pops up, says, welcome back, eight days straight, keep it up. So a little encouragement for your daily measurements. Um, then it gives you a readout for this morning. So this is my morning uh, HRV, nine readiness. And if you click view results, and we'll give you greater details like, okay, today, this is how you compare it to yesterday and this is how you compare it to your baseline. So I'm above baseline today, which means things are increasing, which is good, that's what you want. And then underneath you can put tags. So how well did you sleep, right? And you can document that at what time, you can log it, right? You can log your exercise and they've got a bunch of different options here. And if you uh, do this, you can also select the intensity I had a very hard Tai Chi uh, <laughs> session. I don't, I, didn't, I don't do Tai Chi, so. Um, you can choose your mood, right? And you can log your mood. And so hopefully you can start making some associations to why you're feeling a certain way on a given day, why you might have a high, a high HRV score or a low HRV score, and what is contributing to that. And it gives you this nice little uh, display where it shows you on sympathetic to parasympathetic, where are you lying on that scale? And so that should give you a greater insight into, you know, what activities are you doing that push you in one direction or in the other direction? If you hit view all data, this is where it gets really fun. This is where all the interesting stuff is that I was sharing with you before about the different types of measurements. So you have your, your time domain measurements, right? Which is the RMSSD and the SDNN. And then you have your frequency domain measurements. Again, all this stuff in the other video, it will go into detail, but this information is really important to me. So if I look at this, I can see, okay, I recovered well last night because for me, good recovery, uh, good RMSSD is somewhere between 80 and 100. That is ideal for me. And so if I'm in that zone, that means, okay, today's gonna be a good day from a recovery aspect. But if I scroll down, I look at the, at the frequency domain results that also gives me indication to my parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system and where my autonomic balance is at on that given day, or at least during that particular reading in the morning. Above here, I can look at my heart rate during the measurement. So I'll give you an example of why this is really cool. And it can bring, I guess, greater perspective to all this madness, right? So if I click on previous logs, last night I did a um, Joe Dispenza meditation, okay? And I wanna show you what happens when you start understanding this data. So in the Joe Dispenza meditation, um, he helps you get into a state of what's called coherence, right? Which is a state of mind, heart, an emotional connection, alignment. And you can see in my breathing patterns during this practice, there is a lot of variability, right? An indication of I'm influencing my nervous system. And that is what I wanna see. That is what I wanna know, okay, what am I doing? And is what I'm doing working? To me, when I see this, that means I'm like, okay, this is good, I'm gonna do more of this. So if you tap previous logs, it will show you all the different times that you have logged breathing practices and you can filter, say, I wanna filter through morning readiness tests, so I just wanna look at those. Boom, now it's gonna give me a layout of all those, which is pretty pretty dope. Then under insights, you can start to see trends, right? So you can look at one week, you can look at two week, you can look at one month, you could look at one year. So I'll give you an example of why this is cool. So obviously, HRV is an ever evolving thing and it's gonna change day to day. So if you can see the trend is going up, then you can know that you're making progress. Like for me, <laughs> yesterday was the worst day I've had since I've had the device from a recovery perspective. Probably because I had a lot of stress that day. Also probably because I ate something bad. So all these little things add up and you can start looking at the day and say like, okay, when I do this, this improves and I guess for me, it just gives me greater confidence in the things that I'm already doing and makes me more excited to practice the practices that I already have. So if you go to biofeedback, you can choose different types of breath practices. 
So you can do resonance, you can design your own, you can choose how long you want your inhale to be, how, you, how long you want the exhale to be, you choose the time, you choose the body uh, position, lying down, sitting, standing, squatting. This is very important because this is going to influence how uh, your heart rate is measured. And if you want to start a new one, you can just click the plus button too. You can do your morning HRV reading. You can do an open HRV reading, which means there's just it's just measuring it in real time and there's no like associated breath practice with it. Or you could do just a quick minute HRV snapshot. How am I doing in this very moment? And on the last tab here, you have learn. And uh, there's different podcasts. Elite HRV has a podcast. So this is where all their episodes are. They also have a blog. So all the, their blog articles are going to be here. And in addition to that, they have courses that you can pay for. So if you want to learn more and go deeper, then you can check out their paid courses. So just really quick, let's say we do a custom breathing. We're sitting down. We're going to do it for one minute and we don't need a baseline before no baseline we're just going to go right into it so you hit start reading and it's going to give you this di or this uh, biofeedback sort of display where you can see your hrv you can see your heart rate and you can toggle in between the two and get feedback right there but then also it's going to tell you how to breathe And how to breathe right so you just follow along with that and once you stop the practice it will give you all that data that we saw earlier so that's the app this is the strap and do i recommend them absolutely i think they're incredible uh, for the price point i think this is great it has many applications and it's really really accurate and as far as the app i want to say well number one is totally free number two it gives you tons of data that is not available through other uh, measuring devices such as the aura ring and some of the others on the market and and so i want to talk and so and so obviously i'm very pro elite hrv very pro polar h10 stress strap i just want to talk about a couple of the upgrades that i believe the app could uh could use and if they add this i think it's going to be even better so just some feedback for you guys at elite hrv is when i'm measuring my heart rate variability i want to know when i'm in a state of coherence based on my research what i know is that if I see that my low frequency band is hitting 0.1 hertz, then I am re reaching that state of coherence, right? Which is a state of mind, heart, and emotional alignment. When I'm doing any type of breathwork practice uh, for let's say resonance training or Joe Dispenza meditation or something like that, I wanna be able to see for how long am I stay staying in that state of coherence. And I don't know if the low frequency peak that you guys have as a measurement is I don't know what that number really represents. So maybe at just one point I hit 0.1 Hertz, but for how long did I stay there? Um, I don't know what the high frequency peak really means. And so there wasn't really a good understanding there. And in addition to that, for the frequency domain readouts from a total power or the low frequency power or the high frequency power, I don't know what a good baseline is. Like what's the range of Hertz that I, I should be looking at for that measurement? You know, is that individual to each person or is there an optimal range or is there uh, a number that we should be shooting for with those two different power bands? So Elite HRV, I'm speaking to you, if you're able to include that data or that education um, around understanding that, I think it's going to be super helpful so that people can understand, you know, what they should be looking for on those readouts. There's just a couple of details there that I think could be improved, but other than that, I totally love the app. I think it's an amazing experience. I would definitely encourage you to check it out and get one so that you can start re getting readings for yourself and you can start optimizing these things. And the two resources that I wanna point you in the direction of are number one is Sleep Advantage, which is my course on how to optimize your sleep, which is gonna help you boost that RMSSD score, that recovery score, that overall recovery score. Because if, if you're not sleeping well, then good luck trying to do anything else. And there's so much room to optimize right there before you start getting into anything else. Now, if you're looking to work on your nervous system, live in a more parasympathetic state, uh, and also influence that potentially that recovery score, that RMSSD, uh, then you can check out the Prehab Dojo, which is something like meditation for your muscles. It's a mindful movement practice where you're doing very concentrated isometric exercises that brings you into like 
a zen-like state and it strengthens that neurological connection, that mind-muscle connection. And so through doing this practice, you're able to start building and strengthening that nervous system. And it's totally free. You can download a track for any part of your body that you want to work on and you'll get a video and an audio track to walk you through the entire process. The, the sleep course is a paid course, but the prehab dojo is totally free. I encourage you to check out both. I won't take offense if you don't look at any, but if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're into this kind of stuff. So, so with that being said, definitely go check out that video or the next video right here. And like this video, it really helps get this video out to more people. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, be well.